control of uh, the Islamic um, Muslims in Turkey through Hamid II and killing off the Armenians and controlling all these different monarchs even though they have different religions but they're all serving the purposes of the Vatican. That's why we can never get thrown off by saying, well, Kennedy was a Catholic. Why did they kill him? We can never get thrown off like that because they kill their own. For example, let's go to Kennedy now. John F. Kennedy, <laughs> John F. Kennedy was the greatest president we have had probably since the good things that Lincoln did. John F. Kennedy wanted to end the loopholes for the U.S. steel industry and for the oil industry. That would have brought in $300 <coughs> billion. Dollars. Well, the steel industry is run by J.P. Morgan, that company. Who owns J.P. Morgan? <laughs> the Knights of Malta. The Federal Reserve, the Knights of Malta. Um, we have um, the oil industry. Who runs the oil industry? Well, the Knights of Malta. George Herbert Walker Bush. Uh, uh, William F. Buckley Jr. He's big in the oil. And so Kennedy is opposing the very men who helped to put him in power. Kennedy wa wants to print, he prints United States notes. He prints, I believe, nearly $5 billion worth of, like 4.2, something like that, of United States notes. When you hand around a United States note, nobody gets any interest on it. When you hand around the Federal Reserve note monopoly money, you've got to pay interest on it to the Federal Reserve. Okay? He's taken on the Federal Reserve. What does Kennedy want to do? Kennedy refuses to participate to help give Israel nuclear weapons. So Ben-Gurion hates his guts. Right? And uh, so that's why Yitzhak Rabin was in Dallas on the day of his assassination. Just hanging out. Just happened to be there. Right? Um, Kennedy, he... Um, he wants to break the CIA into a thousand pieces because Kennedy is really an anti-communist. He doesn't want Fidel Castro in Cuba. And so, there's a new book out called Ultimate Sacrifice. You want to get it. So 900,000 pages. In that book, Ultimate Sacrifice, it tells you that Kennedy planned the attack on Cuba to take it back on December 1st, 1963, two weeks before his assassination. If he would have taken Cuba back and given it back to the Cuban people, guess what? No staging base for our invasion. Uh, Kennedy uh, warned about secret societies. Kennedy in 1960 said that no pope will tell the American president what to do as long as I'm president. He openly repudiated the temporal power of the Pope. I have it on record. I have the speech. I recorded it in my book. For doing that, when he did that, that's when they set in motion his assassination. And they decided, we're not going to just kill him with a poison cup. We're going to slaughter him. We're going we're to make an example out of him. Just as Ignatius Loyola says in the, in the spiritual exercises, or in the, in the secret instructions, we're going to blow his brains out. We're going to do it at 12.30 high in the afternoon in Dallas or wherever we're going to do it. So everybody gets to see and we're going to film this with several film people and we're going to show this to all the presidents, the kings, and the military dictators around the world to show you if you think you can resist us, we can kill an American president and nobody goes to jail. Nobody gets prosecuted except Clay Shaw. And if we can do that in free America, we can do it in Russia. We can do it in China. We can do it anywhere. That's what that was for. How was the driver able to get by with what he did? Simple. Simple. They, they, they shot him in a special place on, uh, on Elm Street. By the way, that's why they named Freddy on Elm Street. Oh. Because it's on Elm Street where they killed Kennedy. That's one the only one reason why they named Elm Street. And so what they did was they got him right in front of Abraham Zapruder with his millimeter, with his, with his camera, with his video. Abraham Zapruder was a 32nd degree Jewish Freemason, and he had two CIA front operations. Zapruder was CIA. That's why they let him stand there. They ran everybody else off the grassy lawn. There's nobody there. 
Nobody's there. That's why they didn't stand there. His secretary is standing behind him, steadying him. And his secretary is a personal friend, is the wife of George de Morenschild. And George de Morenschild is the one who handles Oswald after he comes back from Russia. And George de Morenschild is a big oral baron and he's a knight of Malta. His brother is a Russian noble and a knight of Malta, Dmitry von Morenschild. Okay? So, here's the pruder. He's going to film this now. Now, he films it high. Because if you remember looking at the Zapruder film, you don't see the whole car. Mm -hmm. And he films it high. Because there's two shooters that are going to shoot him from the front. William Greer, he's, he looks, he brakes, he brings the car almost to a complete stop. He looks, and he brings his 45 over, and he shoots Kennedy. Because remember, William Greer is left handed, and he's a SEAL. He's a Navy SEAL. He's a CIA also in addition to Secret Service and the driver. And the guy who's controlling Greer is James J. Rowley, whose brother's a Jesuit. Where did that bullet hit him? Hit did him right here. Shot? No, the throw was before. The throw That's was near the overpass. Kennedy gets a, a bullet in the throat, first of all, before the kill zone, and he brings his hands up. Then he's shot twice in the back by the, by the follow-up vehicle, George Hickey who's shooting him with an M16. Yeah, you read about that, uh, uh, Menninger, Menninger uh, uh, Mortal Error. The book is called Mortal Error. And Howard Donahue was a ballistics uh, special. He said, even though he said Kennedy got hit in the back of the head, but he said for sure Kennedy was shot from behind by Hickey. So he shot then twice in the back. He's already got one in the neck. <coughs> And then as he's, as he's in Jackie's arms, Zapruder's filming this, and simultaneously he gets two headshots. He gets a headshot from the driver, and the driver shoots him about here, and it blows the back of his head off here, the right lower region of his head, onto the trunk, onto the street, and later a, a piece of shroud called the Harper Fragment, which was traced back to here. That goes and back and on the street. But he's also shot from the sewer. The guy raises up out of the sidewalk. There's a manhole right in the sidewalk. I have a picture of it in my book. He rises up out of the manhole and shoots Kennedy right in the side of the head here and blows his brain and matter back some 30 feet. He hits Officer Hargis, smashes him with blood and bone, and the 45 slug lands in the grass on the other side of the curb. I have a picture of an FBI agent picking it up. He pockets the slug and nobody sees it ever again. <laughs> Kennedy was shot five times. Twice in the head simultaneously. Twice in the back, upper and lower. And once in the throat. And Conley was shot twice. So no miracle bullet. No miracle bullet. That's all Arlen Specter nonsense. Arlen Specter is a 33rd degree Jewish Freemason, and serving, I call him Spelly's Evil Jew in my book, and they gave him a lifetime in the U.S. Senate, of which he has now put at least three Opus Dei Supreme Court justices on the Supreme Court. Right. Alito, um, Thomas, Thomas and, Roberts. and Roberts. Opus Dei. So now we have a Roman Catholic Secret Society Supreme Court. Members. Five members, and they get to rule on the Patriot Act. And you know who wrote the Patriot Act? Michael Chertoff, that Maybe, Jew, yeah. that Masonic Jew, and Viet Minh. Viet Minh. Viet Minh is a Roman Catholic and an instructor at Georgetown University. They put together the Patriot Act at Georgetown and had it ready to go. And David Gibbs. And David Gibbs. You know what Chertoff means? No. Of the devil. Of the devil. Well, he surely so is. So his name is Michael. Michael. One like under God. David Gibbs the second wrote like three or four different sections of the Patriot Act. David Gibbs the second. I have to check his name. So what you're saying is we're doomed. <laughs> That's right. No, just you. We're I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so. <laughs> now the other thing you want to remember is the man who's in charge of the Department of Homeland Security, which they immediately created after 9/11. No. You're gonna like this. Because remember, the Patriot Act was never read. It was passed into law, and not one congressman, not one read it. Okay? 
What happened was the guy behind the Department of Homeland Security, which Paul Wellstone was killed because he opposed him, was a man by the name of John C. Gannon, an Irish Roman Catholic, Knight of Malta, adjunct professor at Georgetown University, worked in the CIA for 24 years, is given, given the highest medal that can be given the, uh, by George Bush for a civilian. John C. Gannon was in the Jesuit Volunteer Corps in Jamaica after he was out of high school. He is a Jesuit and a Knight of Malta and a personal friend of 